Okay, we're going to talk about pruning trees on productive rootstocks in a systematic four-step process. Uh, the, the thing that is unique about pruning trees on productive rootstocks is the fact that if you're not thinking about it all the time and dealing with it all the time, these types of trees on Gisla 5, Gisla 6, Gisla 12, or some of the other productive rootstocks are going to have a tendency to overset. So as we think about pruning this tree, the thing that you need to be thinking about in the back of your mind all the time as we prune these trees is how do I reduce the cropping potential of this tree? So if, if we look at this as a four-step process, one of the first things that we need to be thinking about is how do I reduce the current seasons or the next season's cropping potential on this tree? In order to do that, I've got to remove some of these future flowering buds and these spurs. By doing that, I'm also going to be renewing this branch and growing a new branch in the place of this large branch right here. What that'll do, it will give me the opportunity to grow a smaller branch here, but it will also renew my spurs. The best quality fruit is going to be grown at the base of last year's growth and on young spurs. If I have old spurs, spurs that are six, seven, eight years old, I will have smaller, inferior fruit. And so I need to be thinking about that all the time as well. How do I renew the cropping potential on this tree and keeping the spurs young and productive so that I grow the highest quality fruit possible? Okay, this is a good example of a tree that is starting to get into some problems here. You notice that there are some, some big wood up here in the middle section of this tree. In fact, what's happening is that the lower branches are actually weaker than some of these middle branches here. So we need to deal with that. And one of the ways that we need to deal with that is, is to stub these branches back. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna make some stub cuts and if you notice, I'm cutting this branch back here to an upright bud. What that will do, it will force a, this, this vegetative bud right here in the middle, it will put on a very strong branch going vertically. That's not the branch that I want. That's not the branch that I'm gonna keep. But hopefully, at the same time, there will be a weaker branch that will come out of this vegetative bud, and it will be at a flatter angle. It'll come out here It'll, it'll stay weak, and in that way, then I can select this branch. I will eventually come back here, midsummer, early summer, and cut this branch off. Okay, we talked earlier about the need to reduce the future cropping potential of this, of this tree. Uh, there, there's two things that we need to be thinking about, the upcoming season and the future season. Right now, we're gonna be dealing with reducing the the amount of production on this tree in, in this season coming up. And one of the things we can do to do that is to make some stub cuts. And so I'm going to start cutting some of these larger branches back, which will be removing the uh, cropping potential of the tree. Again, to an upright branch, we'll have some of these lower buds break to uh, more horizontal um, growth, and then we'll come back and we'll take this off here. If you'll notice that I headed this branch uh, several inches, about 15 inches from the trunk here. The reason for that is that it's very important that if you're going to get regrowth from this point, that light strikes this area. If I were to come back in here and make the cut right here, this might be in too much shade and then this stub would just die. And so anytime you make a stub cut like this, you've got to be sure that there is the potential for light to come down here and strike this cut, otherwise this branch will die and you will not get regrowth from this particular cut. Okay, we're talking about making some stub cuts and I had mentioned earlier that it's important that we grow our fruit on young spurs. One of the ways that we can renew our spurs is to make some of these stub cuts. And if I come back here and I make some more stub cuts here, I'm eliminating some old spurs gives a chance for a new branch to come out of this, out of this old stub here, 
and we'll have, we'll have younger spurs come from that area. So if I think about this, this whole concept of young spurs, I don't want any spurs that are over five years old, which means that I need to be renewing one-fifth of my tree every year. So that means that these stub cuts that I'm making right now need to be made throughout the entire tree and I'll be stubbing back about 20% of the branches every single year in order to keep my uh, spurs less than five years old. In the top of this tree we've got a couple of, of large branches. One of the things we need to be careful about anytime we're dealing with a cherry tree is the overgrowth in the top of the tree. Cherry trees tend to be dominant in the top of the tree and we're seeing that that right here where we've got a branch that is greater than half of the width of the of the corresponding trunk at this point and so we're we've got to deal with this branch otherwise it's going to shade out everything down below and everything down below is going to start getting weak and so there's two things we can do we can come back here like we have been doing and pruning to an upright bud like that stubbing that back hopefully we'll get a weaker branch coming out of that but in reality this is already a too, this branch is already too strong up here. And so probably the best thing to do with a branch that is this strong, you see it's about three quarters the diameter of this branch, is just to come in here and eliminate it completely. Now notice that I just made this a flush cut here, and I'm from the arid areas of the west, and so this is the type of cut that we would make in the Pacific Northwest, in the drier areas of the Pacific Northwest. Now in other areas that are more humid, you would want to leave a stub that maybe was uh, four or five inches long in order to prevent bacterial canker from coming and entering into this, this point at uh, where this cut was made. Over here, right next to it, I have another branch that is getting to be too strong, and it's about that half the diameter that we were talking about earlier, but it's not quite as strong as the branch that we just eliminated, and so I'm going to stub it back, and we'll keep that one because I think we, we can grow uh, some weaker wood off of that and preserve some of these branches down here a little bit lower and keep them from getting shaded out.